Father God, thank you so much for today. Thank you that you have that you have made provision for each of us to, to be here and to participate. And God, just ask that you that you would you would go before us in these few minutes and and that the things the things that are uh, distracting us, that are bothering us, the anxiety. Uh, that some of us feel, or maybe just my anxiety. God, would you would you quiet it down? Would you silence it? Would you make it so that it does not uh, that it does not interrupt our time together? God, uh, you are you are mighty and wonderful, and we are grateful now for the things that we're going to be amazed about when we see you do them. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So this series that we've been in, we've, we've started the year off uh, talking about our idols, this little series called Idol Less, like Idol Dash Less. So we're going to, I turned the word idol into a verb. So we're going to idol less until we become idol less. Yeah, yeah. That's why I have a day job. We started out at the beginning of uh, the beginning of this series. We started out in the book of Exodus, and we started with the Ten Commandments. Well, two of them, two of the Ten Commandments, and it started out. God had some very simple instructions. He said, uh, "Don't have any other gods before me, and don't make any idols. Don't make any image." Don't make anything that looks like anything that serves as, uh, you know, as a little miniature God to you or, or even uh, th that, would, that would serve as an intermediary, like representing God. Like you don't need anything to represent me. You got me. So no idols. And he was very serious about that, uh, if you recall what it said in Exodus 20. And then last week, we, uh, we get to the part of the story uh, of the Israelites where they did the exact opposite of, of what God said to do. And they, they, they built an idol. And it, it wasn't good. They, they, they made for themselves a golden calf. And it was all kinds of, all kinds of nonsense and foolery. Uh, going on because they uh, they didn't know what was going on. They didn't know what was going on, and so they inserted their own their own agenda and and made an idol because they they needed to see something. They they needed to know what was going on. They needed to be able to touch and feel and and all of that stuff. Uh, they weren't able to just have faith in God based on the things that He had already done for them, like literally deliver them out of bondage. And and so we are moving into this into this third this third part moving into the new testament uh, to to see some some application for us not that there's no application in the old testament there absolutely is uh, but the, those narratives uh, give us the opportunity to see someone else's story and to learn from it like if you've ever read an autobiography uh, or a biography a, a story about someone else's life uh, you can you can see uh, what they've what they've done right, what they've done wrong, and you can learn from mistakes that they already made. Uh, I'm I'm in the middle of uh, a Will Smith's book. Um, I can't necessarily say like I can't recommend it in Bible study because it's not appropriate because he says bad words or whatever. But it's a good book, and he's made a lot of mistakes, but he tells them all. Uh, and, and so there are things that we can learn the things that I learned from his story. Like I'm not going to be rich and famous like him, but at my level, uh, there's some things that some mistakes he made and, and I can apply the solutions he figured out to my own life before, uh, before those, those situations come up. Um, when somebody wants to pay me millions of dollars to do something, whenever that, whenever that may be, we want to come into the new Testament to, to see what, what we can what we can learn from uh, the apostle paul 
uh, in his letter to the church at Ephesus. As you probably already aware, the Apostle Paul did a lot of traveling and he planted a lot of churches and pretty much all of the writings that we see from Paul, not pretty much, all of them, all of the epistles of Paul are epistles. They're letters that he wrote to somebody, uh, to some people, to some churches. And, and we're going we're gonna to see what he has to say um, to the church at Ephesus. We're going to be in Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. And I, um, I've got, literally, I have four Bibles on my desk. And I'm not going to read out of all of them, I promise, but probably three of them. Uh, you go ahead and read out of uh, whichever translation works for you. Uh, I'm going to read out of the CSB. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, uh, starting at verse 1. Uh, our, our main focus is going to be verses 1 through 5, but I want to read, uh, I want to read through verse 10 because it's going it, to, it just has a nice little pretty bow on it. And that's what I'm going to read. Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, starting at verse one. I'm reading out of the CSB, uh, and then I'll read it again from, an, from another translation that's, that's going to give us uh, our, our little nuggets for, for tonight. Ephesians chapter five, verse one. Therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children, and walk in love as Christ also loved us and gave himself for us a sacrificial and fragrant offering to God. But sexual immorality and any impurity or greed should not even be heard of among you, as is proper for saints. Obscene and foolish talking or crude joking are not suitable, but rather give thanks for, for know and recognize this, Every sexually immoral or impure or greedy person who is an idolater does not have an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Verse six, let no one deceive you with empty arguments for God's wrath is coming on the disobedient because of these things. Therefore, do not become their partners for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord, walk as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth, testing what is pleasing to the Lord. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Tonight, imitators, not idolaters, or if it needs to like rhyme, imitators, not idolaters. It's not how you say it, but it kind of bounces. We want to be imitators, not idolaters. Imitators, not idolaters in our idolless series. Now, I want to read this again, just the first five verses, which is where our focus is for tonight. I want to read this again, but, but this time I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation. And the Passion Translation, um, it, it says it in such a way that I really don't need to say anything else after this, um, but I'm going to anyway, uh, just, just to help us, because sometimes we ignore, we ignore truth sometimes. I know I do, and I don't want to be hearing stuff. Uh, and so it's good to hear things in just, you know, just a slightly different way. In the Passion Translation, it says, be imitators of God in everything you do, for then you will represent your father as his beloved sons and daughters and continue to walk surrendered to the extravagant love of Christ. For he surrendered his life as a sacrifice for us. His great love for us was pleasing to God like an aroma of adoration, a sweet healing fragrance, and have nothing to do with sexual immorality, lust, or greed, for, for you are his holy ones. And let no one be able to accuse you of them in any form. Guard your speech, forsake obscenities, and worthless insults, 
For these are nonsensical words that bring disgrace and are unnecessary. Instead, let worship fill your heart and spill out in your words. For it has been made clear to you already that the kingdom of God cannot be accessed by anyone who is guilty of sexual sin or who is impure or greedy, for greed is the essence of idolatry. How could they expect to have an inheritance in Christ's kingdom while doing those things? The Passion Translation is rude. It lacks couth. But it says what it says, and I love the way that it says it because it makes it so, uh, makes it harder to miss. When we read from, from, other, from other translations, um, some of us, some of you may like, uh, I'm not going to say us because I'm not included in this, but some of y'all might like the authorized version. It was authorized by King James uh, and uh, the, the King James version. You might like it, but you might not understand everything it says or because you know, because there's there's a word or two there that we don't use commonly these days, it, it might be a little bit easier to be like, oh, okay, well, that's a churchy word, and I don't have churchy problems. But when it's made plain, it's a little bit harder to ignore. Then we have to work a little bit harder to ignore what to ignore what the Bible says, to ignore what God is saying. It's like I I can't read, so this sign can't do anything to me has no effect on my behavior because I don't know what these words mean. Our first point tonight, I'm gonna just give them to you and we're gonna go through it and, and we're, gonna, we're gonna get our lives together, together. Move like God, move like God. How God moves, we move. Yes, just like that. Move like God. What does it mean to move like God? Be imitators. That's the imitation part. Now, what, what, is, what does it mean to imitate? What does it mean to, to imitate? Is this like a Simon Says? And sometimes I think we, we, we see God, or maybe we've been taught to see God this way, but sometimes we see God like he's, like he's the Simon Says person, right? Um, and, you know, Simon Says have no other gods before me. Simon says, don't make for yourself any idols. Jump up and shout and run three laps around the building. Heck, Simon didn't say. Simon says, pray for your boss. Send a nasty email about your boss. Eh, Simon didn't say, gotcha, or red light, green light. Did any of y'all play red light, green light, or am I old? Red light, green light, for those who may not be familiar, or maybe you know it by a different name. Somebody standing up front, and then everybody on the other side in, in PE or physical education, I don't know what they call it today. Everybody's lined up on the line, and red light means, means stop. Green light means go. And then sometimes folks would make up weird stuff, like purple light, and you got to spin around in a circle. Uh, elementary school kids make stuff up. So red light, green light, green light. And so you run red light, red light. Oh, uh, whatever, the, whatever the name of that show was, that series, y'all know that series, the, the, one, the, the one that was made by, uh, by the, uh, the Korean uh, director or, or, or writer. Um, yeah, the, the Squid Games. That first game they played, it was re like red light, green light. But then if they moved when it was red light, then they were assassinated. And some of us might have come up in, in, in the type of church where we believed that, that God operated like, th like the Squid Games version of red light, green light, right? And so like if you make the wrong move, right between the eyes, one shot to the dome, out of here. That's not, that, that's not what 
being an imitator of God it looks like. It's not what it means. God is not some uh, some cosmic killjoy, as as I've heard him described, uh, and he is not a he is not a sky daddy, um, because he doesn't exist in the sky. He's in the heavens, and the heavens are far above the sky. But we're not talking about that tonight. To be an imitator of God, to imitate simply means to to be like or or to follow. Uh, and, and the word has a, a continuous connotation, meaning we remain in the state of following God. We remain in the state of trying to be like him, following his law, following his word, following the example that we see in, in Jesus. So being imitators of God, moving like God, when, when God goes, when God goes right, that is not the time for us to decide that God's word is outdated and antiquated and it doesn't apply to society today. So I'm going to go left and see if God, God needs to come left over here with me because it is 2022 and You get the point. To be an imitator of God is simply to remain in the state of, of following him. I'm going to keep on following God. That's what, that's what the Apostle Paul is, is telling the church at, at Ephesus. Uh, he's, he's giving them some, uh, some instructions on, on how they should be how they should be operating, how they should be living. The church at Ephesus and the church at Corinth, we, see, we can see from, uh, from the way Paul writes to them that they had, they had some little issues going on. Uh, now, Paul repeats some of the same things uh, in, in different letters to different churches because he's consistent, as is all of scripture. It is consistent, even when it doesn't seem like it is, it proves itself consistent. And, and, and some of what we read tonight in Ephesians, the, like the exact same thing is in Colossians. These are things that he teaches his churches, the churches that he set up, that he established. But he was explaining to the Ephesians how they, how they should be living. He had already set them up as a church. He, he, he had already given instructions. He had already uh, installed some leaders. In fact, later on, if, if you're familiar with, with some of the other letters that he wrote, uh, is a couple letters that he wrote to Timothy. Timothy is the pastor who Paul left in charge of the church at Ephesus. That's just some Bible trivia bring that up at, I don't know, at a gathering with your friends and you'll be really cool. Uh, so we, we want to be, we want to be imitators. We want to move like God. That's what he was instructing them to do. Move like God, not like, not like these other people, not like the idolaters. Don't move like them. Don't do, do what God says do, not what not what the idolaters do. And an idolater, I, I wrote this while I was studying uh, this week and I was stuck and couldn't figure out what, what exactly I was, I was gonna say. I wrote down the word, I saw it and I wrote it down and I went to bed. It says, image worshipers, image worshipers. An idolater is an image worshiper. Now, we know that we're made in, in God's image, but we're not supposed to worship the image. Idolaters worship things. We should not be worshiping things, but we should be imitating God. We should be following God. This next, this next part, next point. Live like Jesus. Live like Jesus. Very simple, sounds simple, because it's just a few words. 
but it is a little more complex than that. Now, live like Jesus. This this is part of uh, the this is part of the the mission of Net Church. Love God, love people, make disciples, teach truth, live like Jesus. What does it look like to live like Jesus? What does it mean to live like Jesus? Let's go back. Let's go back to what it says. It, it simply says walk in love. But again, I love what the Passion Translation says continue to walk surrendered to the extravagant love of Christ, for he surrendered his life as a sacrifice for us. His great love for us was pleasing to God like an aroma of adoration, a sweet healing fragrance. Continue to walk, meaning suggesting that we're already walking, surrendered to his love. His love is extravagant. Christ's love is extravagant. Why is it extravagant? Because he died for us. That's pretty extravagant. He died. Like an actual death, he died because of his love. Familiar passage, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. That's an extravagant love. And we, when we are in Christ, we remain under his love, but we must be surrendered to it. Christ surrendered to God, submitted to God. We must submit and surrender to Christ and his love. And so that means we need to live the way he, the way he lived. God came down as Jesus and took on flesh to demonstrate to us how to live. So it's not just, it's not just the things that, that Jesus says. If you've got a red letter edition Bible, it's not just the things in the red letters that, that tell us what Jesus is, is all about. It's not just his teachings, it's his actions. It's his behavior. It's the way he interacts with people. That is his love. When he was accused by, by people of, of, of mingling with the, with the wrong crowd, he was there to love on them and to try to save them from themselves. And he didn't pay no never mind to, to those who, who didn't like the love that he showed towards other people. That's how we should be living. We should be living it, like Jesus, Try, trying to be perfect. We're, we're human. I get it. We're not perfect. But if we follow, if we follow his example and, and we allow ourselves to, to be continuously sanctified by his word, by the Holy Spirit, then we can, we can get, I don't want to say we could get close, but there shouldn't, there shouldn't be a whole lot of space. There shouldn't be a whole lot of space in between the life of Jesus and the life that we live. At least that should be our goal. That should be our goal, to live like Jesus. And, and, and he, submit, he gave up his life. And, and, and when he did that, that, that was an act of obedience, obedience to God. And that obedience smelled sweet to God. It was a sweet aroma. I've got some incense burning in, in my office right now because it smells good and it, it, it helps me relax a little bit. Uh, it, and it, it's, it's just a nice aroma. It, it changes the, the, the ambience of, of this room. Our obedience is the same thing. It's a sweet smelling fragrance. Christ's obedience was a sweet smelling fragrance. That's how we ought to live in obedience. We, we saw what happened with the Israelites when God gave them instructions and they did not obey. In fact, they went in the exact opposite direction. Didn't work out great. Didn't work out great. So we want to, we want to live like Jesus, move like God, live like Jesus. And, and next we want to, we want to stay above the fray. Stay above the fray. That was a nice gentle way of, of saying what it says here. Uh, have nothing to do with sexual immorality, lust, or greed. Now, something I want to point out. 
uh, it, back in the CSB, and it says this in other translations as well, but sexual immorality and impurity or greed should not even be heard of among you as is proper for saints. And we are saints. It shouldn't even be heard of. Now, that doesn't mean that there's no forgiveness for, for our mistakes and mishaps. And it, yes, there is forgiveness. It's covered by the blood. But, but in all reality within our community, that, like that shouldn't be... There shouldn't be rumors and gossip of, ooh, I heard he was doing whoop de whoop and and she and and she and they was doing la da da and so and so got their hand in the money pot. It shouldn't be shouldn't be all that. But this jumped out at me, and I just and I just want to share it. sexual immorality or impurity. I just want to park here for just a second because I want to talk about. Uh, this 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 thing that has plagued us in the church for for a couple decades, and that's purity culture. You, you, if you see here, sexual immorality and impurity are listed as separate things. They are not necessarily one and the same, because you don't have to be sexually immoral to be impure. I said you don't have to be sexually immoral to be impure. So, so just because you, you got an abstinence streak that's longer than anybody's uh, Bible app streak, you done put together 344 days of abstinence, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are pure, speaking to if you are unmarried. Um, if you're married, that's different, but you can still be impure in your marriage. Let me, let me talk to me for just a moment. I can still be impure in my marriage. The Bible says that the marriage bed is undefiled, but I can defile it. If my thoughts and my actions in the realm of my sexuality don't stay inside my marriage, then I become impure. So purity ain't just about not having sex. I saw it in here and I thought it was too important not to say. Greed is likened to idolatry. It says that down in verse five, but greed is likened to idolatry because when we are greedy, we are, we're making idols. I want this. I'm chasing after this. I want a promotion. So I'm gonna chase after that. I want another degree. I want this woman over here and this woman over here. Greed. I, I want, I want, I want. Gotta have, gotta have, gotta have. Where is God in any of that? Where is God in my greed? He said, have no other gods before him. But if I invest all of my time and all of my energy in, in things that, that he ain't tell me to do, don't have anything to do with him, and I have zero intentions of giving him any glory at the end of it, that's idolatry. I am worshiping some image, something. I'm chasing after something that is not God. And, and these three things are, are, are named together, sexual immorality impurity or lust and greed, which is, which is just like idolatry. It's basically idolatry. You might not have fashioned anything for yourself, but you put that thing out there in front of you and made that the goal. I want my goal to be more like Christ. And again, I'm speaking personally. I, I shared at the beginning that I that I I struggle. I live with ADHD, but I don't want that. that to, that's not my identity. That is not who I am. I am in Christ. Therefore, I am a new creation. And his mercies are new every morning, so I'm made new every morning. 
And so if I put my focus on, on giving him honor and, and, and glorifying him and, and showing him to others in the things I do, when I make that my priority, when I, when I make him my priority, like it said, like, like the psalmist said, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So my focus can't be on my inability to focus. I need to keep my mind stayed on Jesus. And if I delight myself in him, and if I, if I keep my focus on him, then when, whenever I find myself struggling, Lord, help me. Whenever I find myself wandering, Lord, help me. Whenever I find myself getting frustrated, Lord, help me. Whenever I find myself wasting time being idle, I-D-L-E, Lord, help me to be productive. Help me to whatever I do, to, to do it in a manner that gives you glory. If I make that my identity, if I find my identity in Christ, then, there, then there's not another thing that I can be defined by. And this ain't just about my, my, my ADHD and my neurodivergence. It's also about my ethnicity and my heritage. This is difficult for me and people and some people like me to hear and understand but my ethnicity is not my identity is it part of who i am absolutely god made me this way and i was made in his image and so me and my blackness and my hair that locks when i leave it be in my head is, is a manifestation of his image, but I am not to be an image worshiper. Therefore, I cannot place all of my identity eggs in the basket of my blackness because that is idol worship. Number four, we need to watch our mouths. We need to watch what we say. The words that come out of my mouth or the things that I, the things that I post, things that I share, need to be careful. Let's go back. Let's look at what it says. Let's look at what it says uh, back in the Passion Translation. This is verse four. Guard your speech. Forsake obscenities and worthless insults. These are nonsensical words that bring disgrace and are unnecessary. Instead, let worship fill your heart and spill out in your words. Jesus said that, uh, that as, as a person thinks in their heart, so they are. And he said that, that out of the abundance of our hearts speaks the mouth. The things that come out of our mouths, the things that we say, whether we say them verbally or electronically, that's in our heart. So we don't, we don't, get, we don't get multiple identities, we don't have a we don't have a, a Facebook identity and a, a TikTok identity and a Twitter identity. Oh, I'm different off of here. No, that's who you are. You might act different off of here, but that's who you are. That is who I am. And so, so do the things that I say, do the words that are coming out of my mouth sound like worship? We need to be careful about the things that come out of our mouths. It should be worship. Flow, flowing from our heart are the issues of our heart. And the, songs, the songwriter said it's gratefulness. That's what, that's what this says. It should be thanksgiving. Let me look at the other translation where, where it says it in fewer words. Obscene and foolish talk or crude joking are not suitable, but rather giving thanks. That's what should be coming out. I am grateful. Number five, lay down every idol. 
and this is kind of the, the crux of everything. He repeats himself here, but it's, it's, for, our, it's, for, our, it's for our good. We wanna lay down every idol. And, and a group of us at uh, Friday Night in Light uh, last week, uh, we decided that, uh, that this year, it's God all along. It's, it, it's been God all along. That was, that, that's uh, Exodus 20, verse one, right before he says the, the commandments. It was God all along, and therefore we should worship him and him alone and have no idols. Verse five from the Passion Translation, for it has been made clear to you already that the kingdom of God cannot be accessed by anyone who is guilty of sexual sin or who, who is impure or greedy, for greed is the essence of idolatry. How could they expect to have an inheritance in Christ's kingdom while doing these things? while doing these things actively as a lifestyle. If I lead a lifestyle of sexual immorality, if I lead a lifestyle of impurity, impurity in, in my thought life, if my heart is impure, how, how, how am I relating to God? How am I in relationship with God, if, if I'm not allowing him to, to change me from the inside, to, to replace my heart and to renew my mind, if, if I remain impure, or if I am an idolater, if I am an image worshiper. See, I got ADHD, I got depression, anxiety, uh, those those are like diagnosed. I, I medicated for them, and that is appropriate. I I need to I need to take my meds. When I don't, I re I realize within two or three days why I'm supposed to take them. But I cannot make any of those things who I am any more than my enneagram is who I am any more than what the Myers Briggs test says about me is who I am. Those may be attributes of me, but I'm not going to worship the created. We should worship the creator. So we, we gotta we we must put away sexual immorality, impurity, and greed, which is the essence of idolatry. We need to lay down every idol. And, and the, reason, the reason I wanted to read, I read a little bit more at the beginning is because it isn't just about what not to do. There, there are options. It, it goes on to say, this is in the C, CSB translation uh, in verse nine, the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth. All goodness, all righteousness, all truth, all goodness, all righteousness, all truth. How can I inherit? I told you I was going to read out of three Bibles. It's already highlighted in this one. In Matthew chapter five, uh, the Beatitudes, and we talked about this uh, last year in one of our studies as well. I'm just going to read them to you simply. I'm not going to expound on them. These are the words of Jesus. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. If we are persecuted, it's not because we don't want to wear a mask 
or we want to uh, we want to gather in a building when it is not safe to do so. That's not persecution that uh, that causes us to inherit the kingdom for our righteousness. The, the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, all righteousness, all truth. Testing what is pleasing to the Lord. What is pleasing to the Lord is that we love him and that we follow his commandments. That we love him, that we follow his commandments. That's what he wants from us. And not follow commandments in a legalistic way, but remember, move like God. Be imitators, not idolaters. And when, we, and when we imitate, sometimes we don't always get the moves right. When, when, we, when we're playing red light, green light, sometimes you might move just a little bit on red light. But we're still doing, we're still doing what we can, everything we can to, to imitate him so that we can move like God and, and live like Jesus and, and stay, stay above the fray, not get mixed up in all the stuff that our, our flesh wants us to do. We're careful about the things that we say so that as much as is possible, thanksgiving and worship comes out of our mouth. And we lay down every single idol.